Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great three-day uh, weekend. Uh, what a crazy, crazy, um, amazing, just insane how one day makes such a big difference. If you guys remember Friday, and I kind of you know recorded this on the on the weekend video. Uh, Friday, I had this is the first day in years that. I didn't do anything on Friday. I saw there was no edge and I was okay with that. And, and I said this throughout the video that it really did take me 10, 12, maybe 13 years to really accept the fact that not every single day was going to be value. And fast forward today, okay, fast forward today and we kind of, you know, again, this is what we talked about, you know, and we always drive the point home that it's incredibly important to only trade value, only trade premium hands because even though you're getting possibly a crappy hand today, tomorrow you can be dealt aces. And that's kind of exactly what we happened today. And that's kind of really the mindset going into every single trading day that especially newer traders um, really have to start to embrace. Because again, unfortunately, you're getting so much misguided information that you know there's so many different opportunities and you could trade 20 stocks a day and do this and do that and it's all this excitement. And realistically speaking, you you know you're ending the day. You're mentally exhausted. You really traded less than uh, subpar setups, and you're kind of stuck in the same place that where you are yesterday, with just a lot less mental equity. And when you look at the action today compared to what we even saw from the majority part of last week, you had an abundance. Okay. Now again, obviously not everybody can trade everything. Again, I'm not going to sit there and, and trade 30 different stocks today. But again, you had. Um, you had um, the pot stocks waking up this morning. You had Beyond waking up this morning on a very generic, uh, generic headline from China, but it woke up. You had Tesla waking up today on a, a boutique firm that upgraded them to an $800 price target. Again, destroyed shorts. Again, it's a whole different uh, conversation for a, a later a little point. You had a virus. And, it, and here's the most ironic part, right? People are looking for excuses for this market to come in. And the headline was, well, there's a, there's a scare from the CDC that there's some virus uh, coming you know, into the United States from a passenger from China. Think about the ir irony of all this, okay? The market has gone up linear, linear, okay? On a whole China trade war headline for the last year and a half, okay? The market went up, negated and deflected a headline that North Korea, okay, was missile testing or nuclear testing possible launches that didn't freak out the market okay then we got then we we uh took out a general uh, some sort of terrorist blah 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 iran responded they hit a military base that didn't freak out the market okay so what the media has you to believe this sell-off again if you can call it a sell-off and i use that word very very loosely today's sell-off was brought to you by some random dude getting a cough and coming into the United States, really? So again, at least that ignited more speculation money. You had all these weird stocks, BCRX and uh, a APT and uh, NVCN, whatever the hell it is. So you had so much stuff going on today and yet the Dow was down, right? Yet the, the futures were down, yet the index was down. And again, shows you several points we've been trying to drive point home for years. The indexes don't matter. You trade when there's value. And the most important thing is act like an adult. That's, you know, that's the common denominator. That's the most important thing you have to walk in every single day. Because again, if you're just trading like a loose cannon with all these expectations or all these emotions flowing, I promise you your results are, are, are going to be reflected on your mindset. Again, this business is really, 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 really hard. Okay. Because the emotional part is 90% of it. Yes. Your process matters. Your ma money management's uh, skills are crucial to your survival, but
But if you are a loose cannon between the ears, you don't have a snowball chance in hell. And that is the reality. And most traders wake up every single morning, like last night's erection, and they think they're going to do something extraordinary today. And the most amazing part is if you continue to, if you continue to trade orderly, methodically, boring, right? Price action predictability, you're going to start to see a lot of results. When you're trading all over the place and you have expectations through the roof and your disappointment level goes from 100 to 0 and 0 to 100, you're going to be out of this business in a very, very short period of time. So it's so important that every single day is you take it on as its own individual interval or else if you're trying to make a blanket statement of what you think this market is, just try to ask the shorts on Tesla how do they feel, right? You can't be smarter than the price action. If the price action is good, you get aggressive. If the price action is subpar, you start getting passive. Last week, the price action was not great. We talked about this in nausea, contracting channels, everything's stuck in the range. There is no edge. You get off the, you know, you get off the gas pedal, just relax. It'll come, it'll come, it'll come. That's what I said. And today was the ultimate validation is if you wait and you wait for your channels and you wait for the expansion channels and you wait for your premium hand, the jacks, the queens, the kings, the aces, you are going to do very, very well. And today's price action did incredibly well. And congratulations, guys. Uh, there's some really, really strong moves today. Incredible moves today. And let's talk about it. So BYND, we covered last night on the video. Okay, last night, uh, we actually covered Tesla and BYND. But BYND, I thought there was more of a methodical move coming up here. So when you look at BYND, we talked about this last night, right? We figured out this channel, what happened today. We talked about these three channels here. We had the top of the channel. We had the bottom of the channel. We knew that 115 was a big area, okay? And when the headline came out this morning, it stopped right at 115. I mean, it, it, if you look at the if you look at the pre-market high, okay? If you look at the pre-market high, it stopped right here, boop right at 15. So we knew that was important. Not only on the 60 minute, we knew it was important on the daily chart. The market opened up. You had a buyer come in right from the word go, literally right from the word go. He bought the, Jan I think he bought the January 24th, 150 calls. This is when the stock was at 113. And once you got that fuel to the fire, Big move, big, beautiful move. Um, I bought the 15 break. Ironically, there was a sneaky pivot, okay? I didn't take the sneaky pivot. I, I wrote right before the open, as you can see here, a 15 and a quarter, 15.50 needs to build, okay? Um, I wrote right before the open, there's, there was in a sneaky area there, 13.30, 13.40. But again, I also said, hey, there's no guarantee it's gonna take out that 15 area. So again, if you're gonna take this area, be conscious. And there wasn't even a thought process. If you did get in off that 13.30, which I didn't, I took that 15 and the stock just exploded, absolutely exploded. Um, I thought it was gonna to stop today. I, I personally thought it was gonna stop at 2.22. Um, and that was like the upper Bollinger Band and that damn thing just, went through just an absolute just an, just a huge move an absolute huge move and i have to i have to tell you i i've seen some really good uh pr departments okay in the past where companies are just constantly putting out these crazy prs beyond's pr company every single time the stock looks like it's about to drip comes out in the new pr like today they came out while well, they're entering china oh, okay so could every other company there was no details nothing but their pr company is really really good uh, early shorts got trapped off that initial rejection, off the 15 area. It reclaimed, absolutely exploded. So, I mean, I was very, very happy with the trade. Uh, and especially, I, I kind of needed that mentally after Friday's day. Again, even though I sat there and I was very mature about it and I let the kind of day play out without an edge, it was very, very mentally tiring. And even though there was no feet to the fire and all that good stuff, I really needed an early good start mentally to kind of remove the funk from last week. Um, and even though the week was okay, but again, like I said in the video, it was just okay. And I really needed beta uh, to wake up. So BYND started the day uh, very, very strong. It was ac actually started the day with Roku. We'll talk about that in a second, but this was the first pivot I put into the channel. Uh, Cigna, I still like, never got to the 30, 15 area. Uh, Pets came out with earnings, obviously never got to this uh, 2785. Uh, 28 area and SDC came close, came close, traded 1390 today. Uh, obviously, never got to the 14 area. Qualcomm never got to the 9640 area. I kind of screwed up Qualcomm. I actually, it was, it was my third trade of the day. Uh, Roku was my first, Beyond was my second. I'll talk about Roku in a second. I kind of screwed up on, on, on Roku. I tried, excuse me, I kind of screwed up on, on, on uh, Qualcomm. I tried to dip by it, okay? 
Um, I try to dip by it right over, where the hell did I try to dip by it? I try to dip by it right over here, this 9420 area, and it traded to 94, it was a rising Bollinger Band, and it traded 9420, and it bounced right away. It started bouncing right away. It was up like 20, 25, right, right away. So I figured, all right, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna sit here for a few minutes and then come back in. And it wound up losing this channel. And I couldn't figure out why. So I wound up taking like a 40, 42, 43 cent loss on the trade. It wasn't, it wasn't a monster loss. It wasn't, had nothing to do with the loss. It was more important. I, I was trying to figure out why the stock didn't hold that area. And I was trying to figure out why it bounced off the area where it did. And I kind of made a mistake. Um, I really should have looked at, uh, the bottom of this rising 60 minute channel because if you look at it the low is right on the bottom of this channel here uh, I should have been buying it here I should have been a little bit smarter and again I, I always learn from the trades that I screw up on I never learn anything from the trades that I make because I'm supposed to make that's the whole point of con confirmation channels so I screwed up here but at least I understand why this rising 60 minute wedge that's what held and that's what held, held the stock and ironically the stock did gap up a dollar but it gapped up a dollar excuse me it grounded up a dollar after it tested the bottom of the range so I kind of screwed up here I would be smarter uh, for the next time so I, I did screw up on Qualcomm uh, Roku was good we talked about Roku uh, 132.50 uh, needs a strong build. Um, I took the 133 break. That was the second entry. So here was Roku, right? So here was Roku right here. And I said it needs to clear out this 132.50 area. It put it in the first move to like 32.90s, back tested. And once it got above 33, just absolutely exploded. Uh, absolutely exploded. So I was pretty happy uh, with Beyond. I was very, very happy with uh, BYND. Um, I was happy with Roku, happy with BYND. I screwed up a little bit on on um on qualcomm on qualcomm but ultimately i was very very pleased with the morning and again i think more mentally more than anything else i was very very happy because of the inactivity uh from friday uh pcg um not a big move uh pcg we talked about this uh 15 excuse me we talked about this uh 1330 1340 it went to like 1366 if you caught the trade god bless small move like 35 cents but here was definitely here was definitely the monster move, uh, again, here's where I thought it was gonna stop at 122 supply. I go, wow, it's an amazing move. But here's where, this, here's for, for the afternoon. Uh, usually you, you don't see a lot of value in the afternoon. Um, this stock just got destroyed. If you saw the news that came out on Boeing, they had some issues and blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares, read the headlines. But this one, this 320.50, 320, I said, if it builds below, can flush. It's a huge macro area. And if you look at Boeing's chart macro, right? Here was the one, here, here was the 320, right? 320 and a half, 320. And once it started building, I mean, once it started building, but basically about a minute, minute and a half after it started building, the stock got absolutely destroyed. Went all the way down to 305. I mean, just a huge move. I know a lot of you guys uh, had the puts on this thing. Incredible, incredible move. So it, again, it, it was just a really good feeling to number one, be in control from Friday. Again, it takes a long time to really, uh, really, really embrace the idea that you don't need to trade every day. I actually didn't trade on Friday, which was amazing. Uh, but it was such a good mental feeling to catch a couple of trades very, very early, very, very aggressively today. And it took a lot of the stigma, almost like the stench off last week's action. And the most important part is now we're kind of in a sweet spot. You get a lot of channels uh, that are um, setting up for tomorrow. I mean, Tesla, again, at what point, and I tweeted this out, at what point can you are, are you gonna turn around finally, anybody who's been short the stock for weeks and weeks and weeks, at what point do you finally just turn around and say, look, I'm just wrong, right? I'm just wrong, um, I'm just wrong. No matter what my opinion is on the stock, I'm just wrong. I mean, what do you stop out? 550s, 560s, 650s, 700s, like what? And again, now before you turn around and say, well, Tesla's a piece of crap, everything's a piece of crap, right? Uh, Amazon, when it was at 300, $300 a share, had a PE of 4,000. And I remember back then people saying, you got to be an idiot to buy the stock with a, with a PE of 4,000. This is at $300. This is a 1,600 point later. So, you know, again, do not blow out your account, okay? Because some guy on social media, on stock tweets, this, that, the other thing is talking about, this stock is going to 200 to 300, uh, okay. Maybe it's going to 1,000, maybe it's going to zero. I, I, I don't know. We're not smarter than the price action. You're not going to be right before you can afford to stay solvent. It's just the, tr it's just the truth. Um, you trade price action, that's the, the judge jury and unfortunately for all the shorts on tesla it looks like the executioner so uh going to tomorrow again index wise i i, I don't care I, I just don't um i think there's some really good value uh for tomorrow uh netflix came out with pretty 
Bland earnings is pretty flat overnight. Um, I'm going to watch Netflix uh, for tomorrow, uh, either off this macro channel's high or this afternoon's uh, after hours low for possible confirmation. But there's some pretty nice ideas that I do like. Um, I actually do like some ideas for tomorrow's session. Um, and let's talk about them, right? Let's talk about them. Let me see what I got here. Um, I kind of like this FVRR. Again, we'll talk about all the beta names tomorrow. Uh, at morning strategy look at the weekly chart on this fvrr okay i had an alert set on this thing about a month ago if you look at the channel here this is a weekly chart if you look at the channel here 27.99 is the high the high from august the 5th this is how long the distribution is today's high is 27.96 if this thing can just reclaim 28 who knows maybe this thing could really really wake up uh keep an eye on that um i kind of like this little stock uh jmia Again, this is a weekly view of it. It stopped that supply in its last move. If it could start reclaiming like 870 or so, maybe it wakes up and goes to 10. Uh, that looks pretty good. Um, I like Amazon. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I do. I like Amazon. It closed today, first day oversupply. This is a six day distribution. If it could confirm this channel today, I think there's a shot it runs to like 1902, 1903 before a secondary confirmation channel. Remember, Amazon uh, reports towards the end of the month. So there are plenty of big bets being, you know, we've been, we've been discussing the macro bets uh, on the, in the option market for Amazon for a couple of weeks today. We had another one today. Uh, somebody had a million dollar premium for the January February, for the March uh, 2100 calls. So they're very, very bullish. I mean, they're very, very bullish bets into Amazon. Who knows uh, what's going to happen uh, after the release earnings, but at least you could, you could clearly see the money. At least the big, big money is definitely on the upside of Amazon. So uh, really good action today. Um, again, I'm very, very pleased, but the most important part is I like the fact that we were in control on Friday. We were in control today. We weren't, you know, we weren't pressing. We weren't jumping out of our shoes. We let the trades come to us and it worked out incredibly, incredibly well. Very, very, very good start uh, for the week. So guys, have a blessed uh, Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. Have a great night. Uh, please arrive to Morning Strategy tomorrow early. Uh, we'll discuss all the beta pivots and with God's help, I'll see you there tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.